Alec Baldwin was just charged with involuntary manslaughter in a new indictment over the fatal shooting on the Rust set. This is now just coming in. A grand jury has indicted him today. Just now it's coming in. Uh, Associated Press reports that this is to do with the 2021 fatal shooting during that rehearsal on the set of uh, the movie Rust in New Mexico. And this was what many were saying was kind of like a dormant case against the actor. Uh, he was the lead actor and co-producer on the film, and he was pointing the gun at cinematographer Hala Hutchins during a rehearsal. It was outside of Santa Fe, October 2021, and the he squeezed the trigger and the gun went off. And he said he pulled back the hammer, but not the trigger and the gun fired. But that's, I mean, forensic experts and firearms experts have said that that's not at all how that works. So there was several civil, there were several civil suits that were put on hold. They were seeking compensation from Baldwin. And they said they wanted to present charges to a grand jury. Uh, and so the plaintiffs in those suits include members of the film crew. Hutchins' husband also had filed suit against Baldwin, as well as I think it was one of the script writers. We'd interviewed Gloria Allred about that uh, a couple of years ago when this happened uh, because she was represented by Allred. And she said she was traumatized. And she also had said through Allred that uh, they didn't at all include for him to like be drawing the gun and 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 pulling the trigger or anything like that that day and that was she and she was writing this she was like she was a part of uh dealing with the script so she said that wasn't even on the agenda for the day so uh they uh they also had charged the armorer in this situation uh which you know the armorer probably there's i would say there's some at least negligence or something with that but she was i think also charged uh with uh was it hannah gutierrez uh with involuntary manslaughter i think but uh, it was weird because their pro special prosecutors dismissed this involuntary manslaughter charge against him back in April. And then they, they changed their minds and they began try weighing whether or not to refile the charge after they got new analysis of the gun. And they said that there's, you know, the, 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 the markings on the cartridge without beyond any shadow of a doubt prove and this is it's like guys this is not easy or it's not uh difficult to you know come to the conclusion on this but they said the markings on the cartridge prove irrevocably that the trigger had to have been pulled end of you can't just you know cock it and then that's you know that's not how that it's not how that works and he kept denying that he did it but uh yeah now, one of the things with this, and I've written quite a lot about this, and like I said, a couple of years ago, we interviewed uh, Gloria Allred, who represented one of the crew members who had filed suit against Baldwin as well. And they had, there were, there were a lot of complaints on this set. So not only was Baldwin starring in it, but he was also the executive producer of the set. And part of the responsibility of an executive producer is you run a sound set. Uh, you're involved in hiring. You are involved in laying the, the rule for set safety, making sure that requirements are met, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's your job as an executive producer. You hire the armorer, meaning the person who supplies and prepares any of the prop weapons and also to make sure that they are cleared. Uh, you do all of that. And that's, the, you know, that's your responsibility as the executive producer. So at some point he's going to have you know, some kind of culpability there. Uh, no matter which way you, you look at it. And it can't just be the armorer. But he, and he was the one who pulled the trigger. But he had denied it, you know, the whole time. And, I mean, the forensic, the forensic reports say what they say. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's beyond any, any question at all whatsoever. So uh, it was weird because they had said they were going back and forth. And I'm looking at, like, some notes of this. They were going back and forth as to, you know, how... Because, uh, like I said, they had dismissed these charges back in April. And then they said, you know, with the uh, release of this new information about the uh, the cartridge marks on the gun, which it shouldn't take you that long to look at it, but they decided to refile these. So he's been charged with involuntary manslaughter. And I knew it was going to be some kind of manslaughter charge. It's not, it's not uh, murder because there's no premeditation. Even if it's an involuntary manslaughter, you know, it's an accidental... Uh, murder. I don't believe that he intended to kill her, but his negligence did contribute to that. And one of the things, too, that I have talked to a lot of people who work in the film industry, and they even asked Nick Cage about this. He was on the red carpet a couple of years ago, and they had asked him about it. And he's like, I always clear my own weapon. 
He's like, you always, everybody, every actor who's been asked this is like, yeah, even if the armorer gets it, the armorer stands there and I will look and I will check and, and I make sure it's clear. Usually they're dummy guns and they, you know, they'll have uh, uh, what they call squibs. Uh, it's not like uh, gunpowder. It's just like a, a, enough to give the appearance of like some smoke and uh, uh, like a blank, but there's, 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 there's nothing in there that's, it's not like an actual round. Uh, but the, I mean, this one, the other, the other complaint that came up with this and this came out and was sort of buried by all of the developments with this story is that the, the weapons that they were using as the web, I mean, they weren't really prop weapons. They were, they were real weapons. They were just supposed to be unloaded, but the weapons that they were using to film were also the weapons, the same exact ones that they were using to, uh, uh, at the, to, to shoot with the, the cast and these were other cast members that came out and said this. They would go away from the set, but they would take these guns. And, and I understand they wanted the actors to experience what the recoil actually was like. So when they're acting, you know, you can always tell if, you know, if someone's firing a gun in a movie and they've never fired a gun before, number one. And number two, they have no idea what recoil is uh, because it looks fake. And they wanted the actors to be able to understand what it felt like so that could be incorporated as part of their characters. And I think that's a fine thing to do. I mean, it brings realism to the story. I get it. I mean, for crying out loud, John Wick, and we're going to talk to Taryn Butler, who trained John Wick, uh, who trained Keanu Reeves for John Wick and Holly Berry and a ton of other people. Uh, we're going to talk to him next week when we're at SHOT Show. I, I get that because you want it to be realistic. But here was the problem on this set. They would bring the firearms back and the cast members had filed complaints previously saying that there was not any attention to safety and that uh, the, the arms weren't properly, the, the weapons weren't properly cleaned and they weren't being properly serviced. And you, I mean, if, the, if you're doing that, the armorer, and this is where I think Gutierrez bears culpability, the armorer is supposed to be in charge of them the entire time. They're the people who are supposed to bring them back, make sure they're clear, make sure they're unloaded, do everything absolutely possible. And there were cast members who were not feeling comfortable on set. Uh, they actually had filed complaints within their union, and they were gonna they were gonna actually they, they were gonna walk off the set. So there were problems predating the, his shooting of Helena Hutchins already. Uh, and I've written about these. I have a ton of stuff up at Substack about this, but uh, there were a lot of problems about this that predated him. Uh, this you know this tragedy, but he's been charged with uh, involuntary manslaughter, and I think that that's you also have to realize too. And, and, and involuntary manslaughter and man he didn't mean there was no premeditation. There was no, uh, you know, I don't think he intended to kill her at all. Uh, so that's, you know, with the, with the charge. But you have voluntary manslaughter and you have involuntary manslaughter. And uh, they, I, the, I don't think that there was any kind of like intentional, um, like I said, it was just, it was just recklessness. Like voluntary manslaughter is like if you're mad and you, like crimes of passion are voluntary manslaughter. Um, it's involuntary is unintentional. It's like accidental. It's um, negligence. So this is the correct charge for this. Uh, and I don't think that the prosecutors would bring any kind of charge. You never want to go over what you can do. If anything, you want to kind of go under what you know that you can prove in court so that you can, cons that you can secure a conviction. So, uh, I don't see how he gets out of this. I mean, there are the forensic reports, the history that I just gave you with the cast and crew. Uh, aside from the fact that he's the guy who pulled the trigger, he's also the executive producer. Uh, I don't see how he is acquitted. I really don't. I really don't at all. And... Uh, they they started filming. Uh, they returned to filming this movie in Montana uh, late last year. So they started refilming it again. And then the part of the deal was that uh, Helena Hutchins' widow is uh, executive producer, is serving as an executive producer, which means that he's. I'm sure he's probably going to be paying attention to the safety and all that stuff as well. So it's not just the armorer. That's why that's part of his responsibility in this. Because remember, when you're executive producer, you also are dealing with the assumption of liability, insurance, and everything else 
for this. This is why, like, remember back, there were stories before Robert Downey Jr., who's an amazing actor, and he was very transparent about all of this when he had his drug and alcohol problems. He could not get insured on a film. And Mel Gibson stepped in to help him. He could not, he, he couldn't get work because you have to get insured to, for these films. And some films, uh, you know, their, their insurance costs are going to be a heck of a lot higher than others, depending on stuff, these kind of variables. And executive producers are responsible for dealing with all of that. Uh, when you, if you, uh, what was the, what was it called? It was a phenomenal series that talked about the making of the Godfather, uh, Al Ruddy who who was just i mean an icon in uh, filmmaking uh but it got into he served as a producer on this film and it got into everything that he had to do to make sure the film ran smoothly and you assume all of this stuff i mean you are the be all end all you're the guy who basically runs the stuff on the set uh so that was a phenomenal was that on netflix no 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 it was on um Gosh, was it on Paramount, I think? If you haven't seen it, it's phenomenal. But it's The Making of the Godfather, the true story of The Making of the Godfather. But uh, that if you that's where his culpability, in addition to being the guy who pulled the trigger, comes in. So there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff here. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Because honestly, I was, I'm getting tired of seeing these people, these two tiers of justice, whether it's for people like Hunter Biden or Alec Baldwin. And Alec Baldwin... I mean, has literally, he blocked me on social media. He, he like called me a murderer and all this other stuff after Parkland. Now, to my credit, and I'm going to say that because it was to my credit, I'm totally going to pat myself on the back. You know, I never got nasty with him over this, but, you know, maybe you should preach a little bit less to people uh, about things you don't know and practice. Maybe if he put as much effort into safety on his sets as he does at railing people over the Second Amendment, maybe there would have been a different outcome.